too many young kids just want to get rich and you start going down weird rabbit holes once like money becomes your primary motivation you really want to prove yourself and you really want to put yourself you know in the history books like you've got to build big companies that solve real problems and that have real impact awesome i guess we'll, we'll jump right into it luca so how i found out about you was i think it was first on your podcast with scott hilsey um it was this was like the first one from like three four years ago you were like you had the sunnies on your your hoodie on it was just like ages ago and i was just watching it and you were just sharing it was such an amazing story and and perspective i remember the story about how you rolled up to that hollywood sort of um party and you had no gucci on and no one recognized you and you rocked up the next week with all gucci and all of a sudden like it was such an amazing podcast and i've been sort of following your journey since then so i guess share with everyone a bit about your story what you do and i guess a brief summary yeah so uh i'm just uh, i've been a serial entrepreneur for the last six years uh you know i've been a part of some huge direct consumer and cpg brands and as of recently, I bought Pudgy Penguins in an NFT project, and um, I'm doing that full time. What was the catalyst for you to get into Pudgy Penguins? Were you looking to create your own NFT and you saw an opportunity to buy an existing one? Tell me about that whole, that was a big move, by the way. Like, it was like, I was like, wow. Yeah, I just really always believed in the Pudgy Penguin IP, and I was a huge collector of Pudgy Penguins kind of when they first minted out. And I always believed that Pudgy Penguins could be the biggest brand in NFT, and so it just made sense for me to buy it. And have you like, do you still do a lot of e-com direct-to-consumer products? Because I know you have those gel glasses, which is an amazing product and brand, love the website. Do you still work with all these different brands or are you sort of full-time on Pudgy Penguins? Yeah, no, I'm full-time Pudgy Penguins now. So what's the day-to-day -day like growing the NFT project? Like, are you focused on like creating events? I focus on um, what utility that the NFTs can provide. What's been the main focus with the NFT project? Yeah, so I think the main focus for us is just like, how do you build a real business around an FTIP? And how do you make it, you know, the next great version of you know, Pokemon or Hello Kitty or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And that's kind of the approach that we're taking. Is majority of the revenue, are you guys reliant on these sort of 10%, you know, transaction fees? Is that majority of where the revenue will come from? Or is that just going to be like a small cherry on top? Yeah, I'm definitely treating it like a small cherry on top, though I think uh, most projects in the space are treating it the other way. Interesting. With that mindset, how could you monetize IP and sort of make money in other ways aside from the transaction fees? Yeah, so you have like the toy business, you know, consumer product goods, merchandising. Uh, then you have media, you know, film and TV. Then you have games and other licensing opportunities, right? So licensing is interesting in the sense that it's kind of a free cash flow business, no risk, all reward type of model. Um, and so it's like, how do you make Pudgy Penguins the next great influencer? Um, it's kind of what we're trying to figure out right now. Have you guys went ahead and started reaching out to sort of brands to get the licensing happening? Or are you focusing on building the brand so you have something to bring to the table? Yeah, you, got, you have to have leverage in that scenario, right? Like right now, you know, you have to be more than just an NFT company, uh, which is kind of our focus. And then once we kind of scale out, then I think the opportunities could be endless. And how about are you going to go ahead and grow the brand? Is it just creating a lot of content on like TikTok, YouTube, and just sort of creating amazing content that can get views and reach and then sort of using the reach you guys have as leverage to sort of get this licensing deal? Is that the plan? Yeah. So, you know, marketing is kind of what I do best. But yeah, definitely creating that brand awareness and creating that familiarity is kind of what my priorities are right now. Got it. Another thing I found really cool when I was like following your journey, Luca, was I think I watched one of your podcasts with like a spiritual person. I think she was like, I don't know what type of spiritual, but like it was like very, it was like a Zen. You were talking about like life. You're talking about meditating, talking about diet. And that was like a really interesting 
podcast to watch because that was like a complete different side of you compared to the e-com Facebook ads Luca. Yeah, no, it was uh, with a woman named Guru Jagat who unfortunately passed away, but uh, definitely an interesting podcast to say the least. How has that journey been? Do you still sort of, do you like meditate often or, or what's sort of your sort of mental health or personal life routine been like recently? Yeah, I mean, you know, wake up, make my bed. Uh, I'm less extreme as I once was, but I'm definitely, you know, live a pretty, you know, ritual based type of life. I think, yeah, I think you, you sort of just knocked out every single question. I think prior to this, I had all these different things I wanted to ask you about. Yeah, I think I've just always been fascinated because like you were like the OG in the e-com game. You are like the OG and you've been always ahead of the curve, like getting into branding early and then like getting into NFTs really early. And I saw your tweet, you are freaking talking about buying like a freaking, um, what's that sports team? What's that new sport? Um, something Pickleball. more. That's it, Pickleball. Yeah. I mean, I'm always thinking of the next great thing, right? Uh, and now I, yeah, I think we're going to have an interesting moment with Pudgy Penguins to like, you know, correlate that my personality with, with a brand like that. I'm, I'm really excited. What do you think like a lot of these e-com, up and coming e-com kids like me or like, you know, everyone that's like into drop shipping, like all the stock traders, what do you think we could do better like what's missing since you've been ahead of game you're sort of you're sort of overseeing all these next generation of kids what are, do you think we are sort of missing lacking that you would sort of recommend us to sort of improve on or get into yeah just just want build the desire to want to build big companies i think too many young kids just want to get rich and you know you start going down weird rabbit holes once like money becomes your primary motivation and so like you really want to prove yourself and you really want to put yourself, um, you know, in the history books, like you've got to build big companies that solve real problems and that have real impact. Uh, and I feel like a lot of people aren't thinking like that, uh, at least kind of from our world. Another thing I wanted to get your advice on is, I don't know if this is something that you went through, but within our space, we're constantly like on our IG, we're following every other e -com kid. And like, it feels like there's always this younger kid pulling bigger numbers, getting that, that super card at a much younger age than your energy. Just this constant, like, who's going to get the Lamborghini? There's like, who, someone's got it at 18. A 15 year old got his first Lambert. Like, it's just keep, it's just crazy. It's just this crazy spiral loophole. And, and like each year you see people just pull larger numbers, get cars at a much younger age. What's your whole thoughts on that sphere? Yeah, I think it's just, um, you know, people trying to keep up with the Joneses and that never did any anybody any justice. So, you know, try to not focus on that and, uh, you know, keep your motivations tried and true. Like, I think like, you know, stuff doesn't really do much. So try to avoid the game of stuff if you can. Given that you're sort of like ahead of the curve and you sort of know much more than me, like what type of questions should people like me who are in the e-com space and the YouTube space, sort of education, um, advertise, what type of questions should we be asking you, Luca? I don't know. I don't know if there's any specific question in mind that like I would have people ask me, I would just, what are the questions you're asking yourself? And is that, are you being productive every day? Are you solving problems? Are you uh, making an impact? I think, you know, it's less about me and more about, you know, other people's purpose and motivation in life and just making sure that people are not losing track of that. Do, do you, how, what's the best way to build like consistency? Like I'm going through a thing where there's like ups and downs and like there's days where I just like, there's like weeks where I'm just really at it every single day for periods of one to two weeks. I'll go on a short holiday, I'll come back and I just lost the groove. And, and for the next week, for whatever reason, I'm just not motivated. Uh, I'm trying to, you know, remember my why, think about why I'm sort of doing what I'm doing. Um, but I'm just sort of not in, in, I'm just out of the funk. Is that a normal thing that even you go through or a, a, any tips there? Yeah, it's definitely normal. And not only myself, but I feel like a lot of other entrepreneurs go through it as well. Uh, you just got to remember why you're doing it. And that's why having a good purpose, a meaningful purpose is important because 
it, you know, though you can't control every moment like that, you know, when you do feel like that, sometimes a good purpose will pull you back in. When I first started, just coming from, you know, a single mother household, three kids, I just didn't have money. My first initial why was just, I wanted money. Like I didn't even know why I wanted money, but I just wanted to make money. And then when I sort of got to that stage of, all right, now I'm pretty chill. The, the next why, my current why, is nowhere near as strong as my my past why. And and I'm no longer willing to, to grind as hard, pick up the phone, do sales calls, do things that past me would have been more than happy to do. A a any tips there? What, what's your thoughts on that? Another interesting, it's, it's another interesting point. Um, I think you just have to live in the present as much as possible, you know, and just tackle the problems right in front of you and keep it moving. Do you work seven days a week, Luca, or is it five days and you take the weekend off? What's what's your sort of current balance? I work six days a week. Saturdays I have off, but Sundays I work. Do you have like a routine, like where you sort of every three months you you sort of take a holiday? I know you like going going to the snow a lot. Is that like a routinely thing, or is it just if someone hits you up and you know, then you would just say yes, but you don't do it routinely. It's not a routine, but I try to go somewhere at least twice a year. Just have some fun. It's important, you know. Any people, any entrepreneurs that you've sort of learned from and and, and studied from or, or sort of see as mentors to you? Uh, not necessarily, but I definitely digested content from everybody. You know, I, I think just listening to as much smart people speak uh, can only be advantageous. So I highly recommend that. Getting to where you are now, Luca, did you go through like a, a, a process or journey of trying to figure out yourself and, and who you are as a person? And because like I went through a thing where a few years ago, like I was going to festivals, going to raves and, and, and partying and, and I would just get so exhausted the next day. And I think I, I realized that that might have not been me. And I've been slowly trying to figure out me as a person and, and things I enjoy doing. Is that a journey that, that you went through it? Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's, again, it, it's, it's a long process and you'll go through the ups and downs and kind of self explore. And, you know, every day is a different evolution. So definitely in line there. That's awesome. Luke. So tell me what's the next, like what's the game plan for Pudgy Penguins over the next say, six to 12 months and actually what's your thoughts on the nft space at the moment like do you think it's going to be slow for the next three to four years or do you think it's going to pick up in the next 12 months i think in the next 12 to 24 months i'll pick up and you know what my my goal for pudgy penguins the next six to 12 months is just really build the brand uh, and and really just start cultivating that audience that I feel like nobody in NFT is really cultivating yet. Um, that's kind of my primary focus. How do you go about creating like viral content for like a NFT? Like it's like a, it's pudgy penguins. It's like a cartoon. How do you go about creating like TikToks for like penguins? We have a mascot. And so you just got to try to bring it to life either through a mascot or through animations and storytelling initiatives. I think there's a bunch of different ways, but those were, would be kind of be the first few. Have you guys had to raise funds to, have you guys been hiring for, for Pudgy Pings, hiring all those parts? Have you just been sort of just funding it all yourself, Luca? Yeah, so we've been funding it all ourselves, and uh, we're right now for hiring a bunch of people because we've been making money. So just continuing to scale and keep pushing the thing forward. That's amazing. Luca, where can people find more about Pudgy Penguins, NFT, what you do, what's the best place for people to like follow your journey? Uh, I would follow us on Twitter and Instagram and as well as my personal on Twitter and Instagram. Perfect. I'll okay. get, we'll link it all below. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time today, Luca. I know it's been a busy week and I appreciate you, you doing this. I know you're super busy. I know you have a lot of going on. Yeah. I've just been a big fan following your journey from afar. So I really appreciate you coming on today. Thanks, Andy. I appreciate it. Awesome. So that's another episode of the podcast. If you guys made it this far, really, really appreciate your time. Please let me know your thoughts. Please give us like a review on Spotify and Google and Apple. And I'll be reading out the reviews every single week. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for your time today. And I'll see you guys next week. Peace.